why I'm recording this. <laughs> because I'm kind of in a crisis, I guess. Yeah, I think that's it's kind of accurate to say. <laughs> I hope that I'm gonna look back at this video, you know, in a few months maybe, and I'm gonna realize that I got through this. I hope so. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm a student at Cambridge and the truth is that I'm not happy there. And I've realized this because I wake up every morning and I, I just know I don't want to be there. And it feels like I'm the most ungrateful person on the planet because I'm at a great university and I just can't seem to appreciate that. Yeah, I, I don't have a solution for that. But I hope I'm gonna find one because, I, as you can tell, I'm pretty miserable about it. So yeah, that was my big secret for the past few months. For some reason, I was unhappy. Not the kind of unhappy that some ice cream and a hot chocolate make go away. It was the kind of unhappy that comes for you in the moments where you least see it coming. While you are getting ready for your day, studying, or walking over to the battery to get dinner. The kind of unhappy that makes you want to stay in bed. The kind of unhappy that slowly makes you isolate yourself from everyone who cares about you, until it's just you, and your unhappiness. I couldn't understand the sadness, because I really had nothing to complain about. I was at one of the best law schools in the entire world, I had two scholarships and great friends. On paper, there was nothing that could have predicted this. So what went wrong? In all honesty, I don't have a good answer to that question. It is probably a mix of things, including changing the country I live in three times within a few months, being in a high pressure environment and not admitting that I had a problem. I knew that something was wrong, but I couldn't fully understand that something was truly wrong because everything seemed to go so well. I thought that this must just be in my head and that it would go away if I just kept going on. As with most problems, it didn't go away. Instead, it got worse. Some days, the only reason I got out of bed was because I knew that my friends would check up on me if I wouldn't show up for something. And the only thing that was worse than being with people was having people notice that I wasn't there. Having them notice that there was something that wasn't okay. In winter break, this little ritual of forcing myself out of bed due to commitments to friends fell apart. It was just me and my unhappiness. At that point, what had started out as a not so good feeling at the beginning of the term had turned into depression. I could no longer lie to myself and tell myself that this problem wasn't real and that it was just in my head. So I talked to my tutor at the beginning of my second term at Cambridge. In all honesty, I thought that she would tell me that this would go away, that this wasn't serious, that I would get over it. But that wasn't the reaction I got. Instead, she was understanding, helped me find resources, including counselling, to address the issue and looked out for me. Somehow, I had not expected that there was room for imperfection at a place filled with perfection like Cambridge. Unfortunately, I had waited quite a while to address this issue and it ended up getting worse. I was scared of telling my tutor that I hadn't gotten better because I wasn't sure how much support I could hope for. Now it came down to the question of whether I should intermit. An intermission is a break from your studies at Cambridge for medical reasons. All the medical support for an intermission was there, but I was scared. Scared of telling people who cared about me that I had been hiding from them for months. Scared of disappointing my parents. Scared of potentially losing my scholarship. And I was scared of leaving because of a problem that was just in my head. I still felt like this was just me only seeing things in a bad light. I still questioned whether this issue was real. It was. But I don't think I would have seen this without the supportive reactions of my friends, family and teachers. Had they told me that this wasn't that big of a deal and that I'd just get over it, I would never have asked for help. So thank you so much, because your reactions have made all the difference. I ended up intermitting and I think it was one of the best decisions of my life. I will be returning to Cambridge, 
but with a much more positive mindset and more awareness of my mental health. If you are someone in a similar position, please do not let anyone tell you that your struggles aren't real, nor even yourself. And ask for help, because you deserve to get it. And if you are someone who hasn't seen their friend in a while or realizes that they haven't been showing up for social commitments or you just have a feeling that they're not doing well, check up on them. They may need you more than you know.